So I'm in the middle of building this small table and I'm about to work on the corner joinery using my doweling jig. This is going to be a right angle joint and right angle is probably not the right word. What I'm what I mean is I'm, I'm not doing like a face frame joint where these pieces meet like that but I'm doing a corner joint where the pieces are meeting like that. And I want to have a half inch reveal. That is to say I want this rail to be inset here about a half an inch and I thought it would be interesting to walk through these techniques uh, to show you how I make this joint with the doweling jig. This is my dowel max jig. Long time viewers have seen me use this on many projects over the years. I've had it for probably around 10 years, give or take. I currently have it set to do uh, quarter inch dowels. It can also do three eighths dowels with a, just a different set of inserts that would go in here. You just swap these guides out and then you can drill three eighths holes with the same jig. I usually use these one and a half inch long fluted quarter inch dowels when I'm doing quarter inch dowels. I find these fit most of my needs. You know, I can always cut them shorter if I have those needs. So first I want to talk about joint depth. Now, if I'm doing something like a, a face frame, I don't need to worry about how deep I'm drilling. I can, I can just drill as deep as I want. And like I said, I'm usually using, you know, inch and a half inch dowels. There's plenty of space. So the drill bit that comes with the jig has a depth collar. You use that to set how deep you're going to drill. And this looks really deep, but you have to allow for the jig also. So this goes into the jig like this with a drill on it. And this is how deep you are drilling into your piece. And I normally have it set to do like a little bit over halfway the length of my dowel. I have a sample dowel where I have a pencil mark here at the halfway mark. And I use that when I'm setting the depth to make sure that I'm setting the right depth. So in this situation, because we're joining boards at a right angle and you want your dowel to fit there, this thickness is a problem. This, this board is, a, is the same thickness as the piece that I'm drilling into. And as you can see, the drill bit is just going to be too deep. And you don't want it poking out the other side. So kind of a long winded explanation just to say that when you're using dowels in a corner joint like this, you really have to be cautious that you're not drilling too far. So normally, you know, in a typical joint, you're going to drill equal distances both ways, but you can't do that here because it's going to go too far. So I've already drilled the holes in my long rails for the table and, you know, I took the stop collar out. So these holes are almost an inch and a little bit deep. So there's tons of room there. Now I just need to drill the matching pieces here and I just have to make sure they're short. So now let's talk about the reveal part of the issue or rather the reveal part of the design and the technique. And all. Actually, I'm getting ahead of myself a little bit. First, we need to set the stop collar. And so what I do then is I'll take a piece of wood and I'll put it here and I've loosened the stop collar and I'll just pull the drill bit back. Well, it's going a roughly two thirds of the way through the board and tighten the set screw just a little bit. And double check. And I think I can go a little bit deeper. So I'm going to loosen that and just, and when you're sure of what you're doing, sorry, when you're sure of your depth, and then get that tight. It's got to be snug on the drill bit because you do not want to accidentally push too far. Let's have another look here. And make sure that, yep, we're good. And again, you have to uh, remember, you actually have to take into account the size of your dowel. So I measured the dowel here versus these holes on the other board. Okay, next. So we need a reveal. Now this jig normally is going to give you flush joints. If you'll notice the little check mark here, there is a matching check mark here and that's on both sides of the jig. This is where you are always lining the face of your joint up. And typically if you're joining two boards like this, or if you're doing, you know, if this is a face frame, you want these to be flush. So both faces are going to be aligned on the side of the jig here and you're going to get flush, but we don't want it to be flush. We want it to be inset. 
And so this jig, everything comes apart. So I can loosen these nuts, pull back on this indexing face, and I can fit spacers in here. Now in this case, I'm pulling out my quarter inch, quarter inch, I'm pulling out my half inch spacer, and that fits in here. Actually, future art here, let me interrupt for one second. So as I was editing the video, I realized I made a mistake. This is not the half inch spacer. This is the 3 inch inch spacer. The Dowel Max kit comes with an assortment of spacers that you can mix and match together. There's a 1 8 inch spacer, the 3 8 3 quarters, inch and 5 8 and you can, you know, mix and match them together in various arrangements. So, sorry, I just messed up on the actual dimensions, the actual concept of how you use this in the jig. I mean, that's all valid. So back to the video. And that fits in here. Now again, I've already done one set of holes. So I did one set of holes with the jig set to be flush. Now I'm putting in a spacer. So if I would drill another set of holes instead of the joint Instead of the board being here, you can see it's going to be shifted over. So when you put the two boards together, the one is going to be shifted over. But adding to the complication is, adding to the complication, you know, this you can see how this jig wants to clamp on the boards and this can clamp fairly wide. And in fact, this side of the jig can be opened up also and you can put spacers in here. So you could, you know, you can clamp onto a four by four or something, but I have this massive assembly here. In that case, I need to take this side completely off. And then I add on this right angle piece. Put the jig back together. Now the jig can slide flush onto my piece, then you need to use a supplemental clamp to hold it in place. And then you can proceed with drilling here. So we're still registering off the side here. We have our spacer, so our holes are moved over. So when everything is done, instead of having a flush joint, these boards are gonna be moved in. So let me show you how that happens. First, I need to make sure I put the holes in the right place. So I'm making sure I know this is the inside of the assembly. So this is where the joint's gonna be. You mark that with a check mark and you typically mark both corners with the checkpoint so you know where the jig aligns and you also know where the jig is drilling. So same over here, we'll put a check mark and a check mark and the same for the other piece. Make sure we are settled on what's the inside and the outside Got the workpiece securely clamped in place here. We got the check marks and we take the jig and we line it up. Now your finger is really good at feeling when things are out of alignment and you just rub your finger back and forth to hold it in place. Sorry, to figure out where you want to hold it in place and then we're going to again make sure the jig is securely together. Make sure it is firmly against the board again. Check that it's lining up and then we will cramp it down and make sure it's not going anywhere. There are five spots on the jig where you can drill. I drilled four holes on the board. So I started from the second hole and went in. Got the drill with the stop collar in place and Now, I admit there's one issue with this is that you need to keep backing the drill out to clear the chips. That's, uh, I think that's probably true of every doweling jig. And there we go. That's one joint already to be matched up with the other piece. So now I got three more joints to drill and then I'll show you
one more, three more joints to drill and then I can show you the dry fit. Yeah. Here we're on the opposite side, but that doesn't matter. We still got the check mark and because the jig is uh, symmetrical, you can flip it around to the other side. So there we go. Right angle joints. Let me just put in a few dowels here for a little bit of a dry fit. Normally I would do this upside down, but it doesn't look so good. So and that's what that's gonna look like. Alright guys, that's it for this one. Um, this, this table is part of a bigger project. That video was getting too long, so I just thought it would be interesting to take this joinery bit out and talk about it just on its own. I have had a few people expressing interest in this jig since I use it so much. And that's it. Thanks for stopping by and we'll see you on the next one.